Hi, welcome to MediatorPodcast.com, a podcast and video series about mediation, negotiation, and collaboration. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I'm a divorce valuation and mediation expert in St. Louis, Missouri. During this episode, we will discuss how to make uncomfortable situations comfortable with Mike Gregory. Mike is a mediator in Minneapolis, Minnesota, author of 13 books regarding various topics about valuation, collaboration, and the creator of the collaboration effect. If we go back to like it, what is collaboration versus communication, you know, everybody's like, oh, we'll just talk it out. Oh, we'll just, we'll just figure it out, right? But then they can't because they come with kind of their positions of, and they stick to their positions. So tell us more about collaboration versus just communicating. Well, communication is just two folks having dialogue with one another. But collaboration says we have a goal. It's a big difference. We're trying to do something together. That's collaboration. And for me, I've been working with neuroscientists now for almost nine years. I'm not a neuroscientist, but I've learned a lot. And I come back with, I'm a simple guy, so I need to make it simple for me too. And collaboration is about, we need to be authentic. We need to find a way to connect with each other. We need to develop an element of trust here. We need to then listen. And listening means suspending judgment. It means focusing, being 100% on listening. And there are gender differences between men and women on how we listen. And I know you can get into stereotypes. I don't want to do that. But there are generalizations that we have on how our brains, and they're different. Uh, you have more white matter. I have more gray matter in my brain. And we don't necessarily know what that's for. We really don't. Science is in there with we don't know what that's for or not. But men tend to want to listen to find a solution as a generalization. And women, as a generalization, tend to listen to want to understand. And so in mediation, women typically have a little bit up on the men. Because you're trying to understand. And as a mediator, you're trying to help the parties understand. So it's about connecting relationships, which is what I do with the parties before a mediation. Because the mediation is up to them. They're making the decisions. In arbitration, an arbitrator makes the decision. In mediation, the parties make the decision. And in this process, it's, it's confidential with what's taking place. Mm-hmm. I learn things by meeting with each of the parties separately beforehand. And I learned when I can ask that 600-pound gorilla question in the mediation. But the timing needs to be right. And, the, and where we are with knowledge and the tone in the, in the room needs to be right to ask those kind of questions. But the listening is to paraphrase, ask open-ended questions, sympathize, suspend judgment, which is very hard when you're emotionally involved as the two parties. It's hard for them to suspend judgment. I can suspend judgment. I can help them. I can help them de-escalate. Then I need to empathize with them when I'm listening. And finally, you don't offer any advice when you're listening. You can offer advice later, but if someone's been listened to, they're far more apt to listen to you. So now that you've been authentic and have a connecting relationship, and now that you've listened actively, now you can educate them, but you need to educate them the way they want to be educated. And 70% of us are visual learners. We like to see it. So having some elements where you can see the numbers on something, you can hold it, or you have a screen over here that has numbers. I'm just pointing at my other screen. There's a screen over here so you can see things on that screen. You can visualize this. You begin to educate them the way they want to be educated. And if you've done those three things, connecting relationships, listening actively, educating judiciously, now you can build bridges to negotiate code. We've, we've looked at what are the facts, what are the issues, what are the feelings, the emotions behind individual issues, and then what are your interests? And they can be economical, they can be social, they can be environmental. Whatever the interests are, we've got them on the table. We can see how to work with each other to try and come up with a solution that both parties can live with, with, with whatever that issue might be. Well, and I think that the two of the big concepts that I think I see in like divorce mediation 
is going to be the act of listening, which which I've interviewed you several times. So I, I'm a little ahead of the game. So I've been focused on active listening, but also the judgment. I think that's really where just universally we as humans, we have judgments based on past experience, based on how somebody has shown up. Mm -hmm. And when you get into the divorce arena, you have that, oh, they're never going to do that. Oh, I, he's not going to listen. Oh, she's not going to you know, change where, um, recently somebody said, you know, every time you say a judgment, you say, you know, that person's never going to change. Add a little thing at the end. Like, I don't know that for real. I don't know that to be true. I don't know that for certain. Right. Because that's the truth. You, you, that person has shown up like that, but I don't know if that is truth going forward. And so I think that there's a lot that you as a mediator are even emulating the things that you then want the participants to start to do as well.